I'm going to show you how to make a laminated roller shade. Roller shades are a great way to make a blackout shade with a minimal amount of material. And we're going to use this shade cloth, which is a vinyl cloth that has a fiberglass core. It is room darkening, and it's available in widths from 36 to 77 inches wide. It's 12 ounces per square yard, so it's a very heavy shade material. And you can use it alone. You don't have to laminate fabric to it. If you want a really quick way to make a window covering, you can just buy this, put it on the roller, and you're done. It doesn't fray or ravel, so when you cut it out, it's nice and clean. What you'll need to do a laminated shade, you'll need laminating adhesive, and it's available by the pint or the gallon. And this is a non-toxic, water-based adhesive. You'll need a paint roller with a low nap, and then a second paint roller. And this one's just going to be used to roll over your fabric after you're done. So this one won't get any adhesive on it, so you'll be able to reuse it later. You'll need your fabric, and you want to choose a fabric that accepts a wet adhesive. Some fabrics like a silk or something that shrinks if it gets in contact with wet adhesive would not be a good idea. So look for some cotton and cotton blends. And I highly recommend that you test your fabric on a piece of the cloth before you make a commitment to using it for your whole project. So that's what I've done here. It looks good. I don't see any discoloration. It didn't shrink. So I'm ready to go. The first thing you're going to do is cut your shade cloth and you want to cut it a quite a bit larger than your finished shade. I would recommend two to three inches all the way around. And on the length, you want to allow about 12 inches extra so that you have a lot of fabric go ahead and roll up on that roller instead of having it end right at the end of the roller. So allow 12 inches and then um, about six inches on the width. On your fabric, you also want to cut that a little wider than your finished shade by two or three inches and 12 inches longer. We're going to start by taping down the shade cloth. You need to have it secure because as you're rolling the adhesive on, you don't want it to be moving around. That would be bad. So I'm going to tape it with masking tape down to the work surface. Laminated shades are a great idea for kids' rooms. There's no cords. You can put them on a roller spring or a roller clutch. And one more on the end. So that's down. And I'm going to mark a square corner before I get started. Just so when I lay the fabric down, I know I'm putting it on square. So I'm using this square, and I'm just going to draw a line around the corner. Now I'm going through the steps really fast. This is just an introduction for you. We have um, instructions available on our website that you can print off. Instructions come with the products. And um, we also have a DVD that you can purchase that shows step by step everything you need to know to make a laminated shade. So I hope this tutorial will get you interested enough to try one on your own. So I have this marked. I'm going to start putting the adhesive on. You need to put quite a bit, a generous amount. I'm going to start off by just doing a nice curvy line. I have a clean, low nap paint roller. And I just got to get the paint, or well not the paint, the glue onto, or the adhesive onto the roller. And the roller absorbed a lot of the adhesive, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm making a small shade here today. If you're doing larger shades, you'll want to get the gallon size. And you can put it in another container if you don't want to feel like you're holding a gallon over your project. OK, that's getting good. The roller's getting covered in the adhesive. And the tape also helps you from getting adhesive on your table. You'll see a little bit of the glue sort of bubbling up and sort of resisting the shade cloth. That's OK. As the glue starts to dry, it'll get tacky. And that's when you know it's ready to put the fabric down. And you can start to hear it a little bit getting a little stickier and tackier. You want to have a good, even covering, a generous amount of adhesive so that your cloth is completely stuck 
but um, you don't want to overdo it so that you have glue squirting out the sides. I'm going to add just a little bit more. It'll get an overall texture uh, that you'll be able to recognize as you're working with it. If you're thinking about making laminated shades, try one first, maybe for um, a room in your house where a spare room or garage or something, just do one as a test first so you can learn the steps and get a feel for it. But this is starting to do good now. The adhesive is getting nice and even. I can feel it slightly drying a little bit, getting a little bit tacky. And that looks good. I prepared the fabric by cutting it, ironing it, and rolling over it to, with a uh, lint roller to make sure there's no strings or lint. You don't want to glue down your fabric and then find a piece of lint or string stuck underneath because once the fabric's down, it's down. You can't move it around. Okay, that looks good. I'll put that aside for now and lay the fabric out. I've squared off one end. I have that square line here. I've rolled it up on a tube. I'm going to put the lid on the glue so I don't knock that over and make a mess like that. Okay, I'm going to line this up at the bottom with the square end and the square mark and then start rolling it out. Making sure I don't get any wrinkles. You can't seam fabric when you're doing a laminated shade, so you are going to be restricted to the width of your fabric. You can railroad your fabrics if you'd like, if you'd like a wide shade, but again your length is restricted by the size of your fabric. Okay, now I'm ready to roll over it with a dry and clean paint roller. Now you can use any kind of roller that is firm and clean and, and flat. So if you have something from doing wallpaper or art projects, that works too. And I'm going to roll in both directions, side to side and up and down. And on a large shade, you'll even want to go at a diagonal just to make sure that all the glue is in contact with your fabric. Now you'll notice the shade cloth is bigger than my piece of fabric. So there's glue around the edges. I don't want to hit that with the paint roller and then roll it onto the front of my shade. But because I allowed extra fabric, I don't have to worry about getting right along that edge because I cut the fabric larger than I needed. That looks good. I, in fact, it looks perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry. You need to let it sit overnight. So this is a great project to do at the end of the day. And then when you come back in the morning, you'll have one finished like this. So this one has sat overnight. And I need to lift it off the table, so I have to pull up the tape. It's sort of like a craft project. It really, they really are fun to make. I'm going to turn this around so I can take this tape off. Now I need to cut the shade to the size needed. To do that, you can use a rotary cutter and a mat, or you can use a good sharp pair of scissors and you need to mark your finished size. Think about your pattern motif. This does have a flower in the center. I planned that on purpose. I'm going to use the T-square again. And I'm using a disappearing pen to mark the shade because if, when I cut it, I might not cut it exactly perfectly. If I did a marker or a pencil, you might still see it after the fact. So I'm going to do one side first and then measure over to get the exact size the other way. And this is a little teeny tiny roller shade. You do want it to be square though so when it comes up the roller it'll be perfect. I'm going to check it this way as well to my size. Okay, now I can cut it out. Now I'm going to, need to use scissors. 
and you'll see how clean this edge looks because I had adhesive that went all the way across. You will need to seal the edges. Some fabrics fray. You don't want to choose a fabric that frays really bad. Um, but this fabric does fray. In order to seal the edges, I'm going to take a little bit of adhesive and my finger. You can wear a glove if you want to, or a little paintbrush, and just wipe these edges down. As you do that, you might pull out a string like that. Just leave it and go ahead and glue all the edges. And again, let that dry thoroughly. And then you can come back and clip off those little strings that are hanging off the edges. You can't hem the edges of laminated shades. In other words, you can't turn it under and stitch it because as it goes up the roller, it would get too thick on the edges. So you'll continue cutting your shade to size. And I have one that's finished. I'm going to get that now, show that to you. So there's the finished laminated shade. I did add a little trim at the bottom. They don't have to be boring. You can even cut shapes if you want to. You can cut scallop shapes. And you do want to put a little wood batten in the bottom, like this. And I've just stitched a seam, turned it up single, and stitched a seam, and inserted the little wood batten in the bottom. You can also fold to the front like this and stitch a seam and insert the batten there if you would like to have a place to pull your shade on the front. This is all included in the DVD and in the instructions. I'm going to attach this onto a roller clutch. This is a very simple lifting system. Be sure to see our other videos on our roller clutch and roller spring. So you have the option of using a clutch with a bead chain or a roller spring when there's no bead chain. The rollers have an adhesive tape on them, so you're going to stick the laminated shade right to the roller. You have two choices. You can have it roll from behind the roller, like this, or over the top of the roller, like this. Now, you're probably saying, well, why would I want to do one over the other? If it's over the top of the roller, as the shade rolls around, you won't see the roller. It'll be covered. So if this is the only treatment in your window, you might want to do it that way so you don't see that aluminum roller. If you're having a top treatment, cornice or swags, or something pretty over the top, you can have it roll up from behind the roller, and that will actually get it a little closer to the glass so you'll have a better coverage for the room darkening. So I'm going to start pulling on the bead chain and it'll start wrapping around. And it's very stiff, so I'm going to help it a little bit as it goes around. But once it gets trained, it'll go up and down perfectly every time. And you can mount the brackets for your rollers I have just put it under a board here for demonstration, but you can mount it right into your window trim or frame, or you can put them under a board and mount another treatment on top. So I think this is a really pretty little laminated shade, and I hope you'll try making laminated shades too. <laughs>